Just like in Are you going to try to record? To judge, Do it anyway. It's, it's not even letting me open it. Figure skating. Christ. Yeah. Get the wrong judges. What the? All right, here we go. Boy went to Harvard and won no hoes. <laughs> oh, this is Christian's favorite. Uh, Welcome into the Recipe Podcast, Celebrity Secrets to a Successful Life. I'm your host, Chef Charles Curl. What a great day. What a great show we have for you today. This is the Gourmet Club Live, which we're very proud to have a very special guest in-house, and we're going to get to him in just one second, but we're going to say hey to the gang. Uh, Monica, what in the hell is going on over there with you? I don't know. Huh? Jesus Christ, you got one job. Yeah. You got one job, and that's just not happened. You know, AD, last week she was doing three jobs mm-hmm. and did them all great. Right. Got paid the same. Yeah, and then, and then this week yeah, is zero. just we, we have to go back to <laughs> hey 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 come on. Uh, there's a lot of love and affection that goes into this, but anyway, you doing okay? Yeah. Yeah. Tired. Jay, Jay, you 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 okay over there? Oh yeah. Yeah. So now now you have added responsibility because now we have to get the audio from you. All right. So don't don't I'm screw that up. Raise. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so let's figure that before. I know you're you're on a timeline. You have to run right out of here. But let's make sure that uh, we figure out how to do that before you go so that we can get the audio so she can post tomorrow. What? We need what? the audio. Yeah, we can't wait a week to post this. Right, right, right. You gotta do it tomorrow? Yes. I'm not gonna be here next weekend, so. Oh. So let's figure that out before. Aaron, Aaron, everything's cool in your world? Yeah, everything's great. All right, we have one of your your buddies here, bro. We, this guest is a tribute to you and your, your friendship circle. Yeah, of course, it's, it's, it's about time that I get to bring my yeah, on yeah, show, yeah. You know? So we're we're getting in, and so we love having Aaron here because he's a. Not good everyone's got to be a chef, you know. I mean, there's, there's so much that goes into this. <laughs> yeah, we said you know we, industry. We so. always say that Aaron's a good eater, but we just found something that he won't eat, right? Balloon. No, no, he'll eat caviar. Of course, he won't. He won't eat ducks. Yeah, yeah. L- like yeah, little, 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 little poor ducks that never had a chance in life. You just like kind of boil them before they become. But they egg. were already dead when we got them. Well, they dead when you cooked them. When you when you boiled I don't them. Think they were cooked. You know what? That's I'll eat them. I feel. I'll See, eat them right Chris, now. You make the same face. <laughs> Chris, you just make the same face. Okay, go ahead. What would you pair with a balut egg? Yeah. Right. I was drinking Thank red you. wine. Thank you. Uh, okay. yeah. Shame, maybe. Shame, but <laughs> hey. An Altoid. I actually um, had a friend <laughs> whose father really enjoyed Balut, mm. but he would only eat them in the room by himself with the lights off. And my friend was like a little girl. What? She was maybe like nine years old. No, I wanted And she came downstairs, and her dad was like, don't turn on the light. I'm eating a Balut. I'm like, don't look at this. <laughs> don't look. That's crazy. Yeah. Well, that's kind of where I'm at. Uh, you want to see it? Oh, hell no. No, right? No, nah, I don't think so. Hell no. Oh. No. It wasn't I don't bad. See it. Yeah, I mean, there's so many things you can eat. Why, why would you eat that? Yeah, Jay's oh. coming over. He's got to he's got to get in on this action. So, AD, everything cool in your world? Yes, man. Man, you got your, your billfold out here, huh? Mm-hmm. Right. Oh, man. Yeah, this is the wallet that was halfway stolen. All right. So, everything's cool in your world, and uh, thanks for coming in for doing our Unplugged show. So, just a quick shout-out to all you... All right, great. Listen, I know we have some friends all over the, all over the world. Um, you guys are super cool for listening to the show, and I appreciate that. But make sure you go to our Recipe Unplugged show. You have to download that one separately. That's a Recipe Unplugged. Search that and download it and subscribe, and then you hear our good friend A.D. on there. He's our in-house uh, comedian, so uh, we'll check him out. He's got some stuff coming out, too. We're looking forward to that. Yes, yes. Yeah, we get some videos and we get some shit, right? Mm-hmm. All right, cool. So then we have our in, in-house in uh, guest here, Chris Poldoin. Did I say that right? Uh, Paul Doyen. Paul Doyen. Yeah. Okay. It's, it's a doozy, but yeah. Yeah, man. So so proud to have you in-house. And, uh, you know, um, Aaron was kind enough to share um, your background. And then we have some notes here on you. Man, you, your life seems just really amazing, like super cool stuff. I mean, you have. I'm you, glad it seems that way. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. It doesn't feel that way. Uh, sometimes it does. I yeah. notice on on the address here, you seem to be like right around the corner from our place of work. Yeah, that's probably true. Yeah. 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 Cool. So, so so tell the audience about you and and um, and, and what's going on in your world. Tell us, give us a quick clip. Yeah, totally. So um, I run Camerata Wine Bar. It's a small neighborhood wine joint in uh, Montrose next to Pauly's Restaurant. It's a really cool wine bar that kind of showcases wines from different parts of the world. And uh, when I'm not slinging wine, um, 
I like running marathons. I was. Oh, I saw that. Yeah, I'm leaving this Thursday for uh, Tokyo. I was supposed to be running the Tokyo Marathon, but they just canceled it because of the uh, <sighs> Wuhan virus. Would you have gone though if they hadn't canceled it? I'm still going. I mean, the the just the to fl- go? Well, United's not refunding me for the flight, and uh, uh, then, yeah. there's no kind of discounts for uh, coronavirus right now. So may as well just go and <laughs> lather so. yourself up in Lysol, bro. Yeah. <laughs> That's no, so I, I, I'm i supposed to go to Cambodia, and I'm trying to use that as an excuse not to go. They just had a ship dock there full of... of you seem people. pretty healthy, though. I mean... Is, is it... If you're healthy, you don't get it? Is that what it is, or...? I, I mean, think if you're you... meant to die, it'll happen. Mm-hmm. And if you're not meant to die, then you'll be fine. Get I out mean, of here, Mario. It's, 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 like, it's like the normal flu in the sense that, you know, uh, I think you're most vulnerable if you're young, if you're old, yeah. if you already have some sort of, like, autoimmune issues, but... You seem like a healthy guy. Well, I, I like to think I am. Um, Are you nervous about the actual flu? I'm just trying to get out of the trip. Is I don't want to go. Oh. <laughs> I'm trying yeah. to use it as an excuse. But uh, anyway, but I mean, you know, let's face it. When you when you're on a plane, though, I never I never worry about anything or or, or is a plane going to crash or even even in the war. I could tell you a lot of stories in the planes. But lately, I have been. You're in that plane for 10, 12, 14 hours, and you're, you that air is not being recycled you know what i mean it's just being filtered so uh i've been I always catch something when i get back you know what i yeah. mean it's so it's tough but anyway get back to your marathon man that's super cool but yet you've you've ran 15 of them 15 of them yeah and you can't just go do those and and what little i know about uh marathons that you have to qualify so you you've done boston berlin london um and apparently a bunch more yeah so um you know, what was really cool was when I was in college, I went to Tufts University, uh, there were spots allocated for students to run those. So um, my senior year of college, I ran the Boston Marathon. It was on my birthday, and I couldn't think of a worse birthday gift to give myself. Mm. It, was, it was pretty miserable, for sure. Yeah. But, um, but it was fun. It was cool. Um, yeah, and then I did uh, Berlin. I did London. And I'm um, trying to think. I've, I did Houston for the fifth time. This year, I did the Napa Valley Marathon a couple of years ago. That one was really cool. I will say, not a single winery was out giving out free Why? samples of wine. What's up with that? I, mean, I, don't, know. I don't know. That's, that's not right. Yeah, it was a bit of a bummer. Yeah. But. Were there at least breweries there? Because I hear beer is the best thing to drink after a marathon. I don't know, because electrolytes. I, I will say that's one of the only times that I crave beer is at the end of a marathon. They have it at Houston. They, I've seen it. So my wife does a half one, but I, yeah. uh, they have beer out there and massages and stuff. And I yeah, was drinking they, the beer. <laughs> They do have some beer, but I will always say there's a couple of breweries that give out like double IPAs. That's not the beer that I want, you uh, know. Yeah, something a little maltier. Huh? I something really light and easy. Yeah, that's give me an ice cold like Miller High Life. I'll I'll, I'll take that. <laughs> oh, okay. So how much how much training do you um do, does does a marathon guy because you don't run the 26 miles like every week or something. Don't you kind of work up to it or run the 13 or run the 18? How, how do you train? I, yeah, you train. No, 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 for sure. Um, so I think consistency is the most important thing, you know, just getting out there and running maybe like five days a week for me, mm-hmm. sometimes six days a week, uh, just kind of depends, you know, if it's a really crazy week at work, you know, a lot of late nights, then I might uh, bail on a run or two. Uh, I would say that my longest run during training is about 20 miles. Mm. So that last six miles you're able to get through just kind of on a, Adrenaline. adrenaline yeah so yeah longest run is about 20 um i do probably one to two days a week of speed work you know where it's like maybe sprints or intervals something like that and then um you know just runs in between hmm. so hmm. Well, plus i'm on my feet for work all the time so. god bless you there you're a young guy still but uh anything creeping in your knees or feet because or, i i hear when you're done uh you're just whacked out for like two or three days uh, but you're you're you're, you're no, uh, you know, I mean, I think the key is, you know, swapping out your shoes pretty frequently, you know, um, and then I see a physical therapist, you know, just for tune-ups, mm-hmm. um, just get checked in, you know, stretching regularly, mm-hmm. so. Did you ever see yourself running two marathons in, in a row in two days? Because I've, I've heard people do that, like 10 marathons. Oh, no, there are people that do that for sure, and they're crazy. I would never do something like that. AD does that. What? Yeah. <laughs> Run marathons back to back. Mm. Yeah, tell your joke now. This is a good, <laughs> <laughs> this is a good no, opening. No, bro. No, that's oh. a wrong show. It's a wrong, <laughs> show. wrong show. That's a wrong show. Yeah, I was going to ask you about Camerata, though. Um, I remember when they first opened, it was 
one of the one of the things that was special about it was it was a place for wine professionals to come and study and do tastings and take notes and that kind of stuff. Do you still do that kind of stuff, like the education aspect? Oh, education for sure is like incredibly important to us. So um, one thing that we do that's really fun is on Sundays we do an event called Psalm Sunday, uh, and it's a flight of three wines. And if you correctly guess the grape and the provenance of that wine, uh, where it's from, then you get the flight for free. Mm. And if you don't get it right, you get three wines for 15 bucks, which is a pretty good deal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's really fun. We do that every Sunday. And then there's a big commitment, especially for our staff, uh, for education. So we reimburse our staff for getting their like SOM certifications. And right now, almost everyone on our staff is a certified sommelier, which is really, really cool. So definitely a big thing for us is education. We want to push lesser known regions, lesser known grape varieties. So the only way to really speak confidently about those things is if you have the knowledge to back it up. Sure. So, yeah. So tell us, tell us about the, uh, how, when is it open? Um, and you have food there as well? Yeah, totally. So um, we're open seven days a week, 4 p.m. to 2 a.m. So um, it's great because if it's one o'clock at night and you want to go to a bar or maybe you were at dinner, uh, get out of dinner around 1130, 11 o'clock and you want to go somewhere and have another glass of wine, but you don't want to be at like a bar where you're throwing elbows to get to the bar counter or dealing with a rowdy crowd, you know, you can come to Camerata. So we do have food. We get all of our charcuterie and cheese from Houston Dairy Maids. Mm, um, yeah. Y'all been to Houston Dairy Maids? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, shout out to Lindsay. Yeah. She's great. Fantastic. Super cool lady. Yeah. Um, so we've got some really good quality cheese, good quality charcuterie, and then just uh, small plates, you know, tapas, you know, things that complement the uh, wine. So I'm trying to think. We've got a really delicious, like, Italian uh, preparation of chickpeas called Chechi that's marinated in a black olive tapenade. We've got some, like, different dips. Everyone likes a good dip, so... Mm. We've got like a preserved lemon aioli, Spanish style romesco, eggplant hummus, stuff like that. You know, nothing that's like going to overwhelm the wine. We want the wine to really be in the spotlight and the food mm. to kind of complement it. Do you get a lot of industry people coming in around around 11 yeah. midnight? No, for sure. I mean, that's a huge part of our uh, yeah. bread and butter for sure. Late night is uh, industry people coming through. Yeah, so yeah. that's why we got Lone Star Tall Boys for three bucks. You know, if you don't want wine, if you don't want a nice glass of wine, you just want a nice cold Tall Boy, we got you. Yeah, so. copy that. Well, so you um, you also have done some really great uh, benefits as well as far as um, uh, helping different uh, um, uh, associations, you know, kind of uh, raising money for Hurricane and, and, and Harvey and a few others. Talk, t- tell us a little bit about that. Yeah, totally. So uh, Hurricane Harvey definitely sucked for the city of Houston. Mm-hmm. Not, not, not strong. Um, and we wanted to see what we could do. So me and a couple other people uh, founded a event called Wine Above Water. And uh, it involved, you know, a big fundraising wine gala at Camerata. We closed for a day and we just had all of our friends that were wine collectors, all of our friends who worked for wineries or had wineries of their own or import companies just bring like their most baller bottles out. And um, we sold tickets, they were a hundred bucks a ticket. People came through, drank really amazing wine, raised money for a good cause, and then we also um, donated a fair number of uh, silent auction items that were sold during or auctioned off during Southern Smoke, um, and that helped bring in a huge sum of money to uh, help people in the industry. So it was great. Yeah, it, really, it says really a good. half a million dollars here, huh? Yeah, Southern Smoke that year brought in over uh, half a million dollars, and you know a significant portion of that came from a lot of those. Uh, silent auction items that we helped secure through our wine contacts. That's a big number. Yeah, it was great. It was super cool. Um, Happy to help out in that cause. Was uh, River Oaks Country Club affected by uh, the hurricane? Um, We just just finished a big number on the golf course. Uh, We lost um, some property that fell into the uh, into the bayou and we're just actually finishing that that up. Really? And it was a it was a really big number to fix it and 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 once you start dealing with water uh, and 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 uh, bayous, you can't just go fix it, right? You have yeah. to have everybody and their mother and 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 the city be involved and lawyers and, and it was a long 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 road because you you fix something on this side, it affects that side of the bayou, you know. So it's amazing, and I got to say, what they did uh, um, was was pretty cool how they fixed it. And we had some water damage, but nothing uh, like the likes of a lot of other people yeah. saying. So. 
but um, how about you yourself or the, um, or, or the or the restaurant? Yeah, so where we are in Montrose, uh, we didn't get any like super permanent damage or anything like mm-hmm. that. We mm-hmm. took some water in at the bar, but you know we have concrete floors, so we were able to get things cleaned up pretty quickly. How about Brennan's on the bayou? We had that chef in uh, uh, last couple, well, a month ago or oh, so. Yeah. You're, you're Ryan. Fam- yeah, you're familiar with Brennan's, right? On the bike. Yeah, totally. Brenner's. Yeah. Brenner's. I mean, uh, they um, they had uh, water all the way up to the second floor. Yeah. Yeah, it was pretty bad. So they have. Uh, it was it was the patio, and then the, the next yeah. floor, and then the, then the bar level. They had it Brenner's all the way in the bayou. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but they they did fix it. They ended up getting it back to back to normal. But then you also did another fundraiser um, for for a women's association right yeah it's an organization called uh i'll have what she's having yeah cool Um, name yeah it's a super great organization um and they help raise money and raise awareness for um women in the hospitality industry kind of empowering you know Hmm. chefs empowering uh bartenders um women at all levels of this industry and um also just trying to raise money for uh, women's health, which, you know, is really under attack here in Texas. So mm. definitely trying to do some good things uh, in the world for really everyone. So yeah. it's good yeah. stuff. Now, what's your uh, what's your affiliation? with? Are, are you I'm like of- the token Y chromosome for them. Like, that's my role. So just kind of like helping out. You yeah. know, um, we do a Father's Day event every year, um, and we raise a lot of money for, um, uh, like, legacy, uh, helping get – women checked in for you know just well woman appointments Mm -hmm. which can be really expensive you know for guys we oftentimes go to the doctor when we're sick Mm -hmm. um but there's a lot of preventative work that should be done you know um especially uh for well woman exams and so this fund that we created allowed women to go in get checked um it was great Mm -hmm. super cool healthcare is kind of a a a weird thing in our industry, in the hospitality industry, because for weird example, because it chef, like doesn't exist, or right? Yeah. Because, no, no, no. Because yeah. for example, chef, all of his employees have health insurance, right? Like if, if you work for him, yeah. But that's a rare thing, right? Totally. Like, so, so if you go work for for a place like like where chef works, um, and if that's the only place you've ever worked, you think it's oh, we get really great benefits. I mean, maybe not perfect, but you know, you have health insurance and that kind of thing. But then once you leave, like a major hotel, you're not working at a major hotel or a major country club, and you want to work at a small place, you know, you want to work at a place that, that's like owned by one guy to, um, then you're kind of on your own, right? No, totally, for sure. So you have to kind of choose like, do I want to work at a big corporate brand where I have good health insurance or do I want to work at a place where it's more fun, it's more um, creative, I have a lot more freedom, but then you don't have the benefits. Mm. No, totally, I mean, I had to buy my plan just through the open network, you know? Mm. So mm. it's the way these things go, How did you guys meet? Uh, through Christian. Oh, okay. Yeah, we... Uh, the Iron, so- Iron Song. Um, we don't, I don't even know how, how you met Christian, but, but Chris, uh, Christian put, you know, brought us together, and we had a, we had a conversation. We were chatting about uh, what traveling and, and food and wine yeah. and, and that kind of thing. And then the more I talked to him, I said, man, this got to be perfect for the, for the show because we've had a lot of chefs on. Um, but one thing we like to focus on on this, on this show is, is sort of the, the business itself, right? The... Um, for somebody who is maybe going to school right now or, or, or is looking to, to advance themselves in this kind of career. Um, and then a lot of challenges come up. Like for example, one thing is the, the health insurance thing, but another thing is um, getting funding. Like if you, if you have this idea and you wanna, you're passionate about it and you wanna establish your own little wine bar or bistro or something, like how do you, how do you go about doing that? Um, and so you know, sometimes we ask, like, like what kind of advice do you have for somebody who's who's sort of younger and, and, and wants to make a name for themselves in the industry. Totally, for sure. Um, well, I can speak definitely to the wine part side because I didn't go to school for, you know, hospitality or anything like that. Like, I studied economics and Spanish literature. Like, that's what I studied. Um, but I was really passionate about wine, passionate about food. So just got a job working in restaurants. And I think a big part of it is just showing up you know, showing up, being on time, asking questions, following up with people. Um, when I started in wine, I was working at Houston's restaurant, which is a great place, um, but not necessarily a place known for having fine wines. Sure. Um, you know, the wine list is small. It's a kind of commodity-based wine program. Um, it's great in its own right. It fits what they're doing, 
Um, but by no means is it like a Papa Steakhouse or like a Camerata or some place that's a wine destination. Um, but I would go to wine tastings, you know, industry events, and I would follow up with people. I'd ask pertinent questions. I'd do my homework in advance, you know, you know, chat with whoever was there, whether it was the distributor, the importer, you know, send follow-up messages, um, and then slowly but surely worked my way into a uh, Camerata. That position became available in 2016, um, took over Camerata in 2016, and took my experience working at you know a big corporate company like Houston's, applied a lot of what I learned there to that space, and um, yeah, the rest is history, so. So what, what's, um, what's next for you? What's next? Do you have anything that just kind of spin in your head that uh, it seems like an amazing, successful program there, kind of a cool niche? Yeah, totally. That, that you're doing there. So well, if- I think wine is like um, incredibly underserved outside of like the innermost loop, right? Like if you go into Montrose, you can't throw a rock without hitting two or three wine bars. Mm-hmm. And we've got a lot of new spaces that have opened up, um, all of which are really, really great. You know, we've got Montrose Cheese and Wine that's part of, uh, you know, the Rosie Cannonball, Mm. Goodnight Charlie's, like that whole group. Mm -hmm. Um, And that's an amazing retail shop that's right in the heart of the city. I just went Um, to Rosie uh, last week. Have you been Did you get a pizza? Uh, Or what'd you get? No, we didn't get pizza. Did you get that focaccia? A focaccia, yeah. yeah, Yeah, That's great. I mean, really really well done. The food was fantastic. It was really well done. Yeah, super good. I actually was there on Sunday night. I grabbed a couple pizzas to go for our staff Mm. because we'd had a pretty brutal Saturday night, Mm. so little fuel for Sunday service. But. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, so they're really great. You've got light years just down the road, and they're a really cool hip space that kind of specializes in natural wine. Um, you know, Penny Quarter just opened up in Montrose as well, so no shortage of wine destinations, you know, in that, you know, two-mile loop. Uh, I don't think there's a lot going on in other parts of the city for wine, so I mm-hmm. think there's definitely room for more wine bars or more wine destinations, wine-focused restaurants in places like, you know. Um, is there anything in the Heights? Uh, I, don't, I don't remember seeing anything kind of. Grand Rue uh, is, I think, on like 14th Street or so. Okay. Um, Grand Rue uh, is a new spot, newer spot. And then um, that's about it. I mean, Squabble's a restaurant that has a really great wine list. Um, I used to be the GM at the Corkscrew. I did that for a little while. Um, and we had an education pro- program, Corkscrew University, Corkscrew U. See you. Yeah, we, yeah, we cork you. Corkscrew U. Wow. Yeah, that was great. That's an actual thing? Yeah, yeah. We, I, would, I would do these little wine classes, and, um, and we would, it's, it's like basic stuff, you know. It's like a Riesling, a Sauvignon Blanc, and a Chardonnay. We, we go through the tasting notes, and then we had a, we had a good uh, cook over there, a good chef, um, Q. And he would come up with all sorts of stuff. Like he was, he was a genius because we, you know, our little kitchen was not really approved by the government. So it was basically like oh. by the government or the city, no, the city or whatever, right? It wasn't, it wasn't approved. So, so he'd be back there like grilling, uh, grilling lamb chops or whatever, making couscous, and and we just and it would we didn't have a window, so we just cut a hole in the in the wall, and, and he was just like, oh wow. And he had and, and and people would come from all over for the pizzas, like they loved the pizzas, and all the pizza was because because Corkscrew was right next to uh, the Restaurant Depot, what is it, 18th, 19th Street, something like that, and and they had these pre-made pizza, uh, well, I guess in French it called made the it sound so the, unsanitary. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but people loved it. It was like it was like pre-made pizza. Though. <laughs> Probably and, didn't and know where it was it. coming. They put from. it in a little toaster oven, and 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 people would come in and say, "Oh man, we gotta get one of those pizzas. We gotta get one of those pizzas." And get the lamb chops or whatever, and and the wine. I mean, um, they let me buy whatever I wanted, you know, as far as the wine list goes. So sometimes I'd buy some real ridiculous things and just and just stick them in there. But for the most part, you know, people would stick with like a cab or a Pinot Noir or something. But every once in a while, you get somebody who, who's kind of adventurous and wants to try like a like a Cabernet Franc from New Zealand or whatever, you know. Hmm. Um, hmm. And, hmm. and we had a lot of fun. So you th- are you thinking that? Um do, do you have a, a piece in the action here, or, or you, just, you just serve as a general manager? Uh, right now, I'm just a salaried manager. Salary manager. Yeah. So, so, so uh, are you th- are you thinking that that um, uh, you'll end up branching out, or they'll have another location that they'll? Uh, by I the th- way, you're I, talking yeah, about. No, no, totally. I think there's room for Camerata Polys to grow, you know, and have a second location, third location in other parts of town. 
So um, you know, the woodlands are spring, something like that. That they could use a nice wine bar. I mean, they have some yeah. nice restaurants there, but no, for sure. Yeah, I think there's definitely room for that, you know. And um, Paul's always looking for growth. Have you met Paul? No. Oh. Paulie Petronella, yeah. Oh, so. I think we have to maybe you can help us get him on the show. We'd love yeah. to have him on and uh, try that. Katie, you never go wrong with Katie or West Tom. <laughs> Yeah, I, I, I'm trying to think if I've been. I think I've been to Katy once, mm -hmm. maybe. Yeah, they build. They they constantly build in that area. Uh, yeah. So the, What's the name of the uh, like? Uh, is it a Cantonese style restaurant that's opening up out there? It's the uh, like Michelin starred like dim sum style restaurant that's opening in Katy. Hmm. Well, there was Yao Cha. No, no, no. This is like Din Tai Fung or something like that. Yeah. It's like a really big deal that it's opening up. They've got only like a like a couple locations yeah, in LA. I, I love dim sum. Yeah. No, it's really, really cool. Because when I was in L.A., I went to like two different dim sum places in one day. One was called Lunasia, and then the other one was, was something else. No, this is a place that, like, it's the least expensive Michelin-starred restaurant in the world. Um, nice. They have a couple locations in Hong Kong, mm -hmm. um, and I think they have a location or two in L.A., and they want to open one in Houston, and they're opening in Katy. Wow. I'm pretty sure, yeah. Wow. That sounds interesting. What? Tell us about the 30 under 30. Um, well, I know about the 40 under 40, but... Um, <laughs> did, I, did, I, did we not write that right? Uh, I don't uh, know. Right, tell us about the 40 under 40. Oh, well, uh, it, Wine Enthusiast is a uh, national magazine, and uh, in 2017, uh, they named me their one of their 40 under 40 like most promising like wine professionals or beverage professionals in the U.S., so that uh, was pretty cool. Wow. I was the youngest guy on the list, too, so, so it was fun. It was cool. Uh, it was really cool to be represented... Uh, I think I was the only person from Texas on the list, so it was cool to see Texas wow. on there. It was great. It was super cool. You know, what they were saying is, you know, I had worked to make, you know, this, you know, wine bar that was known as being one of the, like, most, like, knowledgeable, most technically proficient places, like, more approachable to the general public, you know? Because wine can be super intimidating, right? Mm -hmm, I mean, sure. wine can be tough, especially if you don't feel like you know a lot. And you go into some place where they're known as being like super, super knowledgeable. No one wants to look dumb in any context, but especially in front of like wine, if you're on a date, you know, and my goal was like, let's make sure that, you know, it's fun. It's a bar after all, right? Hmm. Like you're coming in there, you're on a Tinder date, you're meeting up with some friends. You don't want to look dumb in front of those other people, right? <laughs> but you know people who do that, who, who go to bars and they love wine, but they won't order it just because. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm shy but shouty when it comes to wine. So I want to know what is sweet, what, what, what is the name for a sweet red? If I'm trying to mellow out, get some sweet red wine, what is that? Yeah, totally. So if you want like a sweet red wine, you could try getting like an Amarone. Um, Amarone, they, they have this really special technique that they use to make it where they actually let the grapes kind of dry out after they pick them. Okay. And that kind of concentrates all of like the sugars inside, kind of takes out some of the moisture so you get a more concentrated wine. Okay. And they tend to make that wine and in a way that has like a little bit of residual sugar. So it goes through fermentation, there's a little bit of sugar left over. And so it has like a touch of sweetness on the finish. He doesn't it's want really a good. little bit of residual sugar. He wants like a Malvasia. No, so not necessarily. Like I ain't got to have like a lot, a lot I, of sugar. I, I, I see it. I, I know, but like I want that like sweet aftertaste to be on yeah. just on, on some chill stuff. You but know it, what but I mean? if you want a red wine that does have like that sweeter style, mm -hmm. I would try an Amarone. They're right. really, really good. All right. Appreciate it. I see you as a rose kind of guy. Yeah. I've had rose. <laughs> I had a frose yesterday. A what? A little frozen. cold for frozen. Where, where, I know, where? it was freezing. <laughs> Eight row something. Eight row Flint? Yeah, there you go. It was like a margarita machine or something? And they put the Maybe, rose I in? I don't know. Oh, okay. They gave you that buzz? It was good. Okay. Give that brain freeze. Really mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, I did get a brain freeze. Yeah. I'm so, around that. So, Chris, when uh, I, one of the things that we always, we're, Houston is so blessed to have so many amazing restaurants, right? It scares me to death to even think about opening a restaurant in Houston because there's so many great options what if uh what, what's one of some of your favorite places to go man I would say that you know I've got a handful of places that I visit frequently uh that's Nobis uh right in Montrose I like Nancy's Hustle um yeah, Nancy's Hustle comes up uh, a lot can you help us get get uh Monica we're just talking about who we were talking to yesterday about Nancy's Hustle um I want to get them on the show. I've been there three, four times as well. I love sitting on the counter. 
Uh, yeah. Yeah, and watching well, the, one of the only places you can get a seat if you don't make a reservation. Yeah, yeah so. is is watching the girls cook yeah. there. And their plates, they get plates from random places. They had some plates from from River Oaks Country Club <laughs> from like the fifties. Yeah, bastards. Some old no. plates. Yeah. Oh, mega. Okay, yeah, the the food writer for um, yeah, um, for uh, the Food Network actually. Her name is Mega. She, li- yeah, I love them as well too. And and not to I, I cut you off there, but um, my wife and I like to go out often. And I always feel guilty that, that I don't support more of my friends out there in their restaurants, but we always want to try something else. But, but Nancy's Hustle is one of those restaurants that we've been back to two or three times. I always wondered if, if the, for me, if the food would be as good if I wasn't sitting at the bar, you know, because I you have such more of a deeper respect for it when you watch those those girls go to town back there. I mean, they really got a system going on. Yeah. Well, but um, so what else? Uh, Nancy Hustle. What else? Nancy Hustle Nobies is a really fun joint. I like their food a lot. Isn't um, they have more than one location? They opened up a second location called Toasted Coconut. Is that on West Time or further? It, it on? is. I'm pretty sure that Toasted Coconut is on Richmond and Mandel. Okay. Yeah. The yeah. hashtag they like to use is "Get High and Stop on By." So, <laughs> hey. I like that. Yeah. So, so that's a. Um, that's a super modern. I think I think I've been to that one. Uh, if I'm thinking if it's uh, second floor. Um. Gosh. So. Are you talking about the one next to Central Market? No, no, no. Oh. Anyway. Well, I'm trying to think where else I, I I really dig. Um. I like Squabble a lot. My buddy's a chef over there. Um. And Squabble has anyone been? No. No. Awesome joint. It's in the old Southern Good space. And um, it's a really bread-focused restaurant, you know, kind of like European bistro-style food with a lot of American influences. Um, but my buddy, who's the chef there, had previously made bread at Per Se in New York, moved to Houston, helped open Common Bond, and now um, is like the head chef over at Squabble. And so a lot of the dishes incorporate different styles of bread. Mm. So I like that. You know, as a runner, I'm always looking for my carbs. So oh, yeah. I can go there, like bread. snag some really good stuff. I can't, I can't take my woman now, man. Black women and bread don't mix. <laughs> they want a lot of it. They want <laughs> it. You know what happened women and too much bread? Uh-huh. Yeast. Okay, uh-huh. let's keep going. Uh-huh. <laughs> not, that, not the show for it. Go well, ahead. Well, I'm sorry, Chris. One thing that's becoming popular I'm sorry, I've Chris. heard are the, the butter bars. Have you heard of this? Where you go to a bar and they specialize in butter and they can you want like a goat butter or a cow butter. And this butter has been aged for a couple of years. Never heard of that. No. Never yeah. heard of that. I might open one. <laughs> open a butter bar? Open a butter bar, yeah. Well, the guys who run Light Years, uh, that natural wine bar, um, so they actually bring in butter, uh, Bordier butter, really high-quality French butter, and uh, they had to write, like, a letter, like, explaining who they were, what they were about, and why they were worthy of importing this, like, fancy French butter. Wow. And so they offer butter flights. You can go there and get some butter. Oh, nice. Where's High-quality this? stuff. Light years? Light years, okay. I'm like the worst like owner of a wine bar. Here I am recommending other wine bars <laughs> in the city. But no, they're super cool. Um, so they're located, I want to say, on West Alabama, right near um, the Manil. So you could go okay. to the Manil and then just walk over to uh, Light West Years. Alabama. Is natural wine any good? Oh, it's great. Okay. Can you spell it's that like... wine for me? Anamore, you say? Um, Amarone. <laughs> so A M A R O N E. I say something about so, it. Gotcha. So another question. So if you're at home and your refrigerator is full of everything, what are you cooking for yourself? Man, I don't cook. You know? I, I know. <laughs> I know. Oh. Me either. That's not the answer we were looking for. I know. I know. <laughs> right. What would you eat and pair I, it with I used to cook wine? a lot, if and then had, I started working in restaurants. Um, if you had, like, a servant who was, like, an indentured, <laughs> an indentured servant. servant. An indentured servant, servant in your room. So if you had, like, a wine cellar just full of every single wine, what would you pick? <laughs> like the, um, like the, what, what, where do you guys get these questions from? Like, ask them something personal, you know? What's no. your favorite wine? Well, my favorite wine, I can for sure uh, answer that right now, probably, like, a Pet Nat. Pet Nat's probably my, like, go-to. So... Sparkling ri- wine can be made a lot of different ways, Is right? Pétillant yeah. naturel. Yep. What, what does that mean? You're, you're the French teacher, right? What does pétillant mean? Pétillant French? means uh, like the little bubbles, right? Yeah, the like sparkling. It's sparkling, yeah. It, it translates to sparkling and natural, naturally sparkling. So mm-hmm. pet nat 
is how we shorten that petillant natural. But isn't that a flaw, though? Isn't that something you try to avoid? No, no, no. So it's like the oldest style of sparkling wine. It predates, you know, champagne, predates Prosecco. So in the olden, olden days, right, like you would have, you know, grape juice, you'd ferment it into wine, you'd have it in a vessel, and you'd store it in some, like, relatively airtight container. All that, like, CO2, one of the byproducts of alcoholic fermentation, has nowhere to go, so it's dissolved into the wine. Same thing that happens if you leave, like, your bottle of coconut water on the counter at room temperature and you come back to it a couple days later, you open it and it like gives off that little like hiss of CO2 coming out. Mm -hmm. It's the same sort of thing, but like on a bigger scale. So with this, you've got one fermentation that goes on. Primary fermentation occurs, airtight vessel, and all of that residual CO2 is dissolved into the wine and you end up with something that's less effervescent than like champagne, not meant to be aged for a super long period of time. And it's just like fresh, oftentimes unfiltered. It's like a more lo-fi style of sparkling wine. Uh, some people call it the ancestral method because it's how they made sparkling wine before they had the technology to make champagne. It's easy to drink, low in alcohol, super fun, um, and I think like the perfect sparkling wine for Texas. Mm. So that's mm. what we drink a lot at the bar and what I definitely drink a lot at home. Mm. So. Super cool. So if you had a servant, though, any, <laughs> cook, you anything, cook you anything for dinner. Say butler. Say butler, bro. What, what would you During have Black cook? History Month. I would, hey, I would, hey, hey, come on. What, what is, I wasn't even going there. I was just saying you have like a, you know. If, if I had, you're yeah, kind, you're kind if I had a well-paid employee <laughs> Thank with, you. with good benefits, um, okay. All right. full health insurance. Cool, yeah. But he's got to be hungry. Um, he's got to want to work, though. Not, oh, no, for sure. Yeah. <laughs> you you got to keep him hungry. You got to keep him hungry. Otherwise, they're, they get lazy. Go ahead. I, w- I would probably have him make me a really good lobster roll because oh. I've made lobster rolls before, and they are a pain in the ass. Mm. That's what I had on Friday. So you would week. want them to do it? Yeah, I'd have them make me a lobster roll. They're getting paid. You gotta, you gotta, you gotta cook the lobster. You gotta break down the shells. You gotta like break apart the meat. You know. All right, let me ask you this about a lobster roll. You have two options. So either way, the the roll is hot. Do you want the lobster to be hot, or do you want? You're to asking like... whether it's Connecticut style or whether it's, I believe, like Maine style. Oh, so right? which, which one's the one? Because there's Connecticut one... style. I'm pretty sure it's like is a where it's salad? like. No, no, no. That's like Maine style. Oh, okay. So Connecticut <laughs> style is like where it's uh, tossed in clarified butter. Yeah. Where it's like served hot. Right. Yeah. Right. So that's definitely the way to go, <laughs> okay. for sure. I love mayonnaise, but if I'm going to have a lobster roll, yeah, just hot butter, lobster meat, hot dog bun. So yeah, There's a place in Boston we went by, and they have the Lobstitution, which is 28 ounces of lobster in this huge roll. The Jesus. I, I didn't get the Lobstitution. I got a smaller no. one. Just but I, I think, I, I think I'm, I'm a little disappointed. I went with the, the mayonnaise-y one because yeah. I didn't realize that they had – I guess what you're calling Connecticut style. I didn't even know that's what it was called. but Pretty so, sure, yeah. Yeah, somebody else got that, and, and uh, it looked really good because it was like hot lobster, hot roll. How do you go wrong with that? Mm. You know. Well, listen, man, we sure do appreciate you coming in and, and uh, sharing with us. We all have to go down to your restaurant. How, how can everybody find you or find your restaurant? It's not uh, a restaurant. It's a, it's a wine I, I'm bar. I'm sorry, a wine, yeah. wine bar. Well, they do serve, they serve food. Eat, they serve food. So yeah. We're at 1834 Westheimer Road next to Polly's Restaurant. Okay. Lots of parking. Um, again, we're open 4 to 2 a.m., so uh, swing by at any point. And then we can be found on Instagram at Camerata Houston. I can be found at Braised Thoughts. That's T H O U G H T S, not thoughts like T H O T S. But Braised Thoughts, you can find me on Instagram there. It's your you blog, find... right? Yeah. You mean thoughts? I was like T H O T S. I'm like, thoughts. Thoughts. Oh, thoughts. Thoughts. <laughs> thoughts. <laughs> R.I.P. Pop Smoke. <laughs> R.I.P. Pop Smoke. All right, super. I appreciate cool. appreciate Thank coming you. in. I'm definitely gonna go down there and check it out. And yeah, come uh, through. Bring the wife and um, Jay. If you can help me out, we didn't uh, thank the sponsors earlier on in the show, so we need to do that real quick. We have Ace Aceway uh, owner Ricardo. He's a fantastic guy, and and if you need anything clean, whether it's office buildings or facilities or kitchens, you name it, they'll clean it with a great attention to detail. And we love them because they're they're super cool, and they will do anything. Also, a Scafia School of Culinary Arts. If you want an online education, and uh, no matter where you are in the country, you can do that. Whether you're working, have a job, or, or something else, you can do this online and get an education anywhere in the country. And go, so go to the Scafia School of Culinary Arts. And also, we have a brand new uh, sponsor starting up, DR Delicacy. We love them, and um, they have some super amazing product, right, Aaron? Oh, they're black truffles to die for. Yeah, man, yeah. black truffles are. You just eat them like like it's a, a fruit. 
Just yeah, take a big bite out of those black troubles. Yeah. Why are you it's laughing? Because so it's good. Black History Month. Is that why you're laughing? No, <laughs> nah, the emphasis is on black. <laughs> 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 we, we had a whole we had a whole show about black. Yeah, truffles. you missed that one, bro, because they're, they're actually yeah. She brought a lot of them. Two pounds of uh, black truffles, and they're just sm they're just barely smaller than a baseball. They're and amazing. You squeeze them. Yeah. Oh, and get... during the thing that we went to the event, she gave us a whole tube full of masters. truffle honey. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Damn, that sounds good. Yeah, well. it's really good, so man. Good. So so uh, we love them, and, and go to them drdelicacy.com, and you can order anything specialty you want, and and wild mushrooms, caviar. Uh, truffles. They do have white truffles too coming out, but that's more like summertime. You get your oh, servant to yeah. put them in the scrambled eggs. <laughs> Jesus in the morning. Christ. That's what you do. So, man, you're letting that thing go. Yeah. But anyway, we want to thank everybody. Listen, we have another show. To, uh, we appreciate you all listening to this one, but please go to our other show as well. And that's the recipe unplugged, where D, uh, that A.D. Hodge is, is uh, our in house comedian. You can listen to that show. So download that one separately, and that's the recipe unplugged. So thank you so much for taking time to listen to the show. Remember, you're especially great. Get off your ass and do something today. See you next time.